So Next.js made a huge change in the way it fundamentally works. That is by introducing a concept known as nested layouts. Now nested layouts, if you have seen Remix or if you have heard about Remix, that is the first framework which introduced, I think, nested layouts because that was the first time I heard about nested layouts in a way. And that is a little interesting approach and we'll discuss what exactly that is. But this layouts RFC, the blog post which Next.js rolled out 15 days ago, a couple of weeks ago, is just an RFC. An RFC means request for comments. That means the Versal team, the Next.js team currently is looking for feedback from users to know how to exactly implement this, right? Which is like a change in fundamentally how layouts work. This is a long blog post, right? So let's go through a bunch of important parts in this blog post and figure out what does that mean for you as a web developer. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So let's start with how routing currently works in Next.js. So if you're someone who has used Next.js, you already know that any file you put inside of pages folder in Next.js becomes a route on its own, pretty much like how PHP works, right? You put a single file and that is exactly what the route is. So Next.js also works in a similar way where if you have this file structure, then you can see correctly how it maps to the URL in a way. You have pages, dashboard, settings.js that is how you can access it then on top of that next.js also does its own stuff like dynamic routing and you know just catching all the routes as a way to just make the developer experience much more simple in cases of dynamic parameters and url there are data fetching solutions which exist currently get static props for example helps you to get data on the build time and get server-side props helps you get data and server-side render the page on the runtime so data fetching is also sorted in a way dynamic routing is sorted the whole routing system is sorted but now next.js is shifting or next.js is at least introducing a way to do nested routing as well through a new folder to a new app folder now let me remind you that this is still an rfc so it means it is very much possible that this folder might not be called app at all that might be called something else because these things are subject to change but the overall thing the overall feeling of introducing this thing is to introduce nesting routing support and is to make it a little bit better so currently the way this would work is that apps this app folder can coexist with the pages folder. So whatever routes you have in the pages folder would work, continues to work just like it has. But this app folder over here, this would be the one where the magic of nesting routing can begin. Okay, so let's understand now that how this new system would work. So you see that in the app folder on a higher level view, you would be able to create a file called as layout.js. Now this layout.js file, which will be available, would be rendered for every single layout, right? And this will not be changed when you are navigating on the website. For example, if I'm navigating to this, if I'm clicking this link, you can see that I'm actually not performing a full page reload, right? I'm just navigating on the website and it just changes stuff. And this is because if you go ahead and take a look under the hood, the way these modern frameworks work, is that if I go ahead and click on showcase, for example, let me just clear the log and click on showcase, you can see that I'm actually not loading a web page, I'm actually loading a JSON file, right? So this showcase.json file, what this does is that it, it just contains enough information for this page to render, right? Because we already have the code, we already have the React, you know, React components and React library loaded in. So if I go back to, let's say, blog, you're gonna see that we have blog or example, or maybe even getting started. So you can see the response which we get is pretty much just the page props and what needs to be rendered, right? The HTML and stuff. So this is because Next.js does not need to reload the whole website or reload the whole page. And that is why in the new system, which, which will be introduced, there would be this one file called as layout, which would be rendered for the first time when somebody lands on your website. And then on the subsequent navigations, that route would not be changed or that render would not happen again. So you can say a layout is a UI that is shared between route segments in a subtree. Layouts do not affect URL paths and do not re-render. That means the React state is preserved. That means whenever you load a URL once, that URL, whatever you want to do first time in that layout.js, maybe that's, you know, just fetching some user data or some static data or server side rendering it, that's it. That's, that will happen. And then for any subsequent navigation on the website, 
it will remain same. But of course, if you refresh the page, if you perform a full navigation, then of course it will be rendered again. You see that this layout.js file can also be of two types. The root layout, which applies to all the layouts, all the routes, and the regular layout, which, you know, you can apply to specific routing areas. For example, for blog posts, if I'm on slash blog, I might need to render categories, but I don't want to render it again and again every single time somebody's visiting on a page, right? So what I can do is I can just render the categories or render some basic data in the layout.js file. And then in the dynamic segment of the route where the blog is actually, you know, I'll actually get the blog data, I get the actual content. And for root layout, for example, I might choose to get this, this personalization behavior in the navbar, the user data, anything, you know, anything can go over there. Okay, next up is these nested layouts. So you can create a page.js file in the layouts. So for example, you have this file structure, app layout.js. This layout.js is the root layout, which gets applied to every single layout, right? And it does not re-render. Then we have dashboard and then layout.js. This means this analytics page would have this file, you know, rendered first before this. And this file would also have, you know, this route would also have this file rendered, right? So if I'm, let's say if I go down a little, this is my root layout, which is, you know, root layout.js file that includes a header and a footer and, you know, just an empty area for rendering the rest of the tree. Then let's say in my dashboard layout, I don't have to include my header and footer again, right? Does that make sense? Because you see that this file would render a part of UI which others can build on top of. So this is what nested layout in a essence means that you can pretty much build the layout incrementally in different files. And the advantage of this is that when you are navigating on the website, you don't have to render or you don't have to re-render the rest of the layouts which are not really changing. So for example, this is my root layout, this is my dashboard layout, and then this is my settings page, right? Setting has page.js. When this is rendering, this will use these two layouts. And let's say if I have a link, which goes from settings to analytics, when I click on that, literally all I get is this page data, right? Because I will not be changing root layout. Why? Because it's just a soft navigation inside Next.js. It's not a full page reload. And also be not really entering I would not be re-rendering this dashboard layout because again, this is a layout which is included in this full layout. However, if I'm going from dashboard slash analytics to let's say slash leaderboard directly, you know, slash leaderboard itself, then this file would remain same. I mean, this layout would not re-render, but this would be destroyed, right? This would be destroyed and maybe recreated depending on whatever the file structure is at that point. Again, this section just includes a bunch of constraints and not even constraints. I mean, it can be, you know, JavaScript or TypeScript can be used for Next.js projects just like usual. And layout components must accept a children prop. That's a requirement. So you have to do a props.children to actually render the subsequent layout like this. So if you have a layout.js file, you have to render children. If you don't, then of course, you know, it will just not render anything at all except for this layout no matter on which route you are. And once you have something like this, Next.js would take care of populating this stuff automatically. So it will render a full layout as if you are writing it on a, you know, just on your own inside of your pages directory. Now again, this nested layouts enable React Server components. We have talked in depth about what React Server's components are in past. So I expect you to just go ahead and watch that video if you don't understand what React Server components are. But this RFC would allow Next.js developers to incrementally start adopting RSC into their Next.js applications. And again, by default, it says that any files which you have inside your app folder would be rendered on the server as React server components, right? So this means that you could potentially also, Vercel in itself would potentially enable the option of streaming these RSC on the front end. So that just means improved performance, that just means increased user experience again i'm not gonna get a lot into react server components at the moment i would highly recommend you to go ahead and watch my video on react server components done a few months ago but the overall idea is that there are two types of components server components and client components server components are rendered on the server and then they could be streamed to the client in some some format where you know you don't need 
to have a react hydration phase or you don't need to have a lot of javascript on the client side to inject whatever server has rendered so technically you still don't get a server side rendered thing because you're not rendering html on the server you send the html as fast as you can then you start rendering components individual components on the server itself and once those components are rendered once they have the data and they are ready you can stream those components to the client and it will be injected as if you know it's just it's just streaming some data which which might take some time that's the essence of react server components again this this part goes a little bit into server and client components which we already have covered in that video so this is more of you know react server components thing than nested layouts so you can see in terms of data fetching Next.js says that you can fetch data in layout.js just like we regularly do with get static props and server side props. For example, in this case, you could do a server side render and you know just get some valuable data, which then just stays over there. So once you run, once you server side render a single layout.js, upon subsequent navigation, if there is no SSR in other routes, that means if other routes nested routes are just static paths it will just statically render stuff right so you get the best of both worlds in a way you were also able to server side render but you also have static things going on now this example obviously shows both things are static so that doesn't count but you get the idea right if you have a cookie if you have a user over here then you can do a ssr in this area and then in this area you can just bring in regular data and upon subsequent navigation you are not doing ssr every single time why because layout.js file does not render when you are navigating to Next.js, programmatically navigating through a Next.js website. And of course, just like Remix does it, Next.js will also eagerly initiate data fetches in parallel so that it means that if you have something going on in layout.js for data fetching and inside of slash dashboard slash settings slash page.js, it will just run both of those things, both of those rendering phases together so that, you know, you end up with a page as soon as you can. Again, it's pretty much what Remix does in a way, plus the with the added advantage that Wurzel has the technical bandwidth and hardware and, you know, a SaaS, fully blown SaaS platform to execute it really well. So that that would be like really interesting to see how this turns out. So yeah, I mean, I mean, it's still an RFC. There are a lot of things to discuss and Wurzel has laid down that there is a lot of stuff they need to do but it's an interesting turn of tables over remix who pretty much were advertising and still it advertise nesting routing as one of their biggest features so yeah it'll be interesting to see how next.js shapes this up implements this probably i think they'll have a next conf in a couple of months september october that's where the, they do next conf every year more or less and i'm pretty sure that they would have something rolled out at least in experimental mode by then so yeah that's pretty much it for this video let me know your feedbacks on this i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of codedamps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching